Before I became a Christian, um, I went to Sunday school, I attended church every week, and I just thought I was a regular child and I knew that God was always there with me and everything like that, but I never truly gave it all to Him. I was 14 and I just thought a couple weeks before I became a Christian that I just thought that something needed to change and I needed God in my heart to live in me and through me. I knew that God always wanted me to become a Christian. I knew that I knew what it meant to become a Christian. I just never gave it all to Him. And whenever I was that age, I knew that I knew what it meant to become a Christian. And I knew that that's what I needed to do, and that's I knew that's what I wanted to do. You know, we had prayed for Courtney for years, you know, as we do both our children, to, you know, that there would be a day um, that they would uh, accept the gift of salvation. Um, I kind of felt like I seen, you know, could tell Courtney was struggling a little bit with it, just, you know, different things. Um, you know, so of course we began to pray, pray harder and pray more and prayer and, uh, and fasting. You know, on behalf of Courtney, um, to uh, and then you know I think probably one of the hardest things as a mother was praying that conviction would come over her, uh, and that she would really be uncomfortable with God's conviction until she until she chose Him. She had uh, spoke with Pastor Doug some about salvation, and uh, we had been praying for her. And uh, the night that she actually got saved. Uh, I knew something was really bothering her. Um, I thought she was physically sick. You know, I, I thought she had a cold or just something was going on. She wasn't her normal self. I knew that whenever I wanted, like I was just falling all around the house all night and then she finally just stopped and was like, what's wrong? <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I, I was taking her temperature actually, gonna give her medicine. I knew something was wrong with her. Um, I, like I said, I thought she was sick, and then, you know, finally God, um, you know, it was like he really, he'd been talking to me, and I just wasn't listening, and he impressed upon me, you know, this is what you've been praying for. My life before Christ was what I would consider a, just any ordinary childhood. Um, I attended First Baptist here at this church since I was a young child. As, as long as I can remember, this is the only church I ever went to. Um, I would just consider everything about life before Christ ordinary. Just I always knew he was with me. Uh, I feel like he just always loved me. And that was kind of just very ordinary is really how I describe it. Uh, when I was uh, about the age of 10 at uh, Camp Joy one summer, I knew that even though I knew God had always been with me, I knew he was asking for more. He wanted me to accept his gift of salvation, and uh, he wanted to live in my heart. And I just knew there was more more in store for my life than than him just being with me. He, he wanted that personal relationship. He wanted me to accept him. I think that, I, like I said, I just knew he was always with me but that um, he was just really there with me that day at camp. And I just feel like he you know, was just calling me um, just to come closer to him, just to accept that gift of salvation. Um, I will say I don't think my experience stopped there. Um, it continued, and I knew he was with me. I knew I was a Christian. I knew I had a home in heaven. Um, but I always felt like I didn't want to bother Christ. Uh, I felt like I had a good life, a blessed life, and I felt like that everything was good, he was with me, but that almost I wasn't deserving enough to bother him on a daily basis. And um, that all changed um, in July 30th of 2000 uh, after a, uh, some complications during a pregnancy with Courtney. Uh, came about and after her delivery um, we came home from the hospital and um, 
I was having a lot of physical complications. I couldn't take care of myself. I couldn't take care of my children. I couldn't take care of my husband. And um, on that Sunday morning, it was the day after we got home from the hospital, so we weren't in church, and I was standing in my kitchen. And like I said, I always knew God was with me, but I never gave him complete control. Um, I loved him. I loved my relationship with him, but I still held on. I didn't... You know, I would pray, but I still kept it as my problem, and I never really laid everything at the foot of the cross, as, you know, you would say. And that morning, you know, I found myself um, in tears for the first time, crying literally out to God, saying, what am I going to do, God? You've blessed me with a wonderful home, a wonderful husband, two beautiful children, but I cannot physically take care of them or myself. What am I going to do? And he spoke to me that morning. He said, you're not going to do anything. It's time to give it to me. I've asked you. I'm here for you. I, hand it to me. And I did. That morning, I said, I'm all yours, God. Really, there's not one individual who connected me to Christ. Um, like I said, I grew up here at FBC. Um, I can think of many people people that are sitting here that, you know, that are going to be sitting here watching this tape that, um, that they taught me, they taught me in Sunday school, you know, they serve as a connection. Um, I had, you know, wonderful Christian parents, a Christian family. Um, they still support me, pray for me, you know, have supported me all through my childhood, my adult life. Um, a brother who, you know, supported me my entire life, who still supports me and encourages me in my walk. Um, my grandmother, Steve, definitely has encouraged me. Um, you know, he he helps me to be a better Christian. He, you know, encourages me, supports me. Um, I would say our friends, family. My mother-in-law is a definite connection. Uh, a wonderful Christian woman who, you know, encourages me. Um, but my two daughters are probably the biggest encouragement. You know, when I see them and their faith, and I strive to be the Christian mother that I know God called me to be. Uh, I think it's so important to be connected to the church. Like I said, um, you know, I can think of so many people who invested in me uh, throughout the years here at First Baptist that I think that's an important thing. Um, you know, I feel uh, a connection because I've always been here since a small child. You know, I. Um, I got to watch my father be saved and baptized uh, with my brother over in the chapel. I always attended church with my parents. Um, I was saved, baptized. So physically speaking of the church here, the, just the physical building itself, I'm connected. Um, you know, Steve and I were married here. Both of our girls have been here since they were born. Um, you know, I've watched Steve and both my girls be saved and baptized here. I was saved and then, you know, followed in baptism here. Um, so I'm connected like that. Um, I think it's important to connect. Um, I think you have to, I think we're called to connect, to um, be be there for, for other Christians. We're there, you know, I think God calls us. I'm one of the first to say, God, I can't do that. Um, I think we are supposed to connect in his work. You know, I'm the first when someone says, you know, would you be willing to, uh, like recently, willing to teach Sunday school, girl Sunday school, and I'm probably the first to say, God, you know, when I spend time in prayer, God, that's not me. I'm not capable. And I have learned that he's telling me I'm not calling the capable. I'm calling someone that's willing to pray and give. Um, I think we must connect with our um, finances to the church. I think we have to connect um not only financially, but with our work. You know, we have to work for the church. I think we have to connect to the people. We have to reach out. We have to pray and encourage the people around us. And, um, you know, I feel like that's one of the ways that God connects me most to Him is um, since the time in 2000, um, is prayer. Everything for me and my walk revolves around prayer. But it's so important that um, we love on each other, we encourage, 
the people we're in church with. I think it's also important that we encourage the people in our community, that we support and encourage the other churches in our community, the other Christians, um, that we just, it's not if we say we're a Christian, it's if we have, if our story, if our daily life reflects being a Christian. God has our story planned out for us. You know, each one of our stories is not going to look the same. And that, um, you know, my story can't be her story, and her story can't be mine, or anyone else's. That, um, you know, we're each individuals, and God created us, and our story is beautiful, no matter what it is.